the same price as the Logitech G910, the same switch, better profile, as in it's nice and sleek and slimmer. The same macro keys, except it doesn't have ones that are on the top, which you can never reach. And a overall sleeker looking design. Is this the replacement for the G910? I'm Rio Gion, and this is Rio Gion Keyboards. This board has a really good layout with long backspace, shift keys, and enter keys. It's too bad that the bottom row is non-standard, and it also doesn't help that the board uses row G switches, which makes replacing keycaps really difficult. At least the switch is gaining enough popularity to a point that other manufacturers are making boards with this particular switch as well. It would be lonely to just have only Logitech making Romer G boards, I really like the volume scroll wheel, which looks very nice, feels great. Although, to be honest, I don't really use it that much. But I know it's really nice to have, and I know that there are people that buy boards like the Corsair boards, and they can't really buy anything else. The media controls, lighting controls, Windows lock and that odd X B X button doesn't appear to be doing anything and it's only white backlit which I thought was a giant missed opportunity because they should have made it RGB so that the rest of the board can coincide together. The board manages to have a set of macro keys on the side and all of the mentioned buttons without having a giant footprint. This is a very unique opportunity considering that most of the competition tends to have such large footprints when they add in these features. The board uses Omron press switches which are the same switches that are found in many Logitech boards nowadays. Back then it seems like the Romer G switches would be an experiment and some would thought that the switch would be a one-off kind of thing then fades away. Fortunately, this wasn't the case and the switch remains with Logitech and are now beginning to branch off to different manufacturers such as Sound Blaster. This is great because having more variety will only benefit the consumer as they have more choices for their mechanical keyboard needs. The design and lighting system is exactly the same way as Logitech where the light is located right in the middle of the switch Thus, light shines out brightly and evenly. I thought that these switches have the best lighting because it is uniform throughout every single key. Also, the white backplate really helps the color stay strong. The keycap is made from thin ABS, which seems to be the norm for this particular gaming keyboard market, which Seems like something this particular manufacturer could stand out from since their direct competition is Logitech and let's face it Logitech is a giant competition it would make a lot more sense for them to use double shot ABS or maybe double shot translucent PBT keycaps man that would really make them stand out from the competition and gives the consumer that extra incentive to consider them over the competition. Sadly, this is wishful thinking and it's probably not going to happen. The board uses Omron press switches which are the same switches that are found in many Logitech boards nowadays. Back then, it seems like the Romer G switches would be an experiment and some would thought that the switch would be a one-off kind of thing, then fades away. Fortunately, this wasn't the case and the switch remains with Logitech and are now beginning to branch off to different manufacturers, such as Sound Blaster. 
This is great because having more variety will only benefit the consumer, as they have more choices for their mechanical keyboard needs. The design and lighting system is exactly the same way as Logitech where the light is located right in the middle of the switch, thus light shines out brightly and evenly. I thought that these switches have the best lighting because it is uniform throughout every single key. Also, the white backplate really helps the color stay strong. The board uses cherry stabilizer which is great for cleaning because I found the Cold Star stabilizer to be very annoying to clean. That metal wire from the Cold Star stabilizer has to be removed in order to remove the longer keycaps. Which seems like an additional step that seems needlessly complicated. The board also came with USB pass-through which is very handy for those that have setups where they would require one and the way how the USB pass-through was placed, in my humble opinion, I thought was really slick. It is located on the top with an angle so it really shows that the developer have thought out how people would place their mouse cords and USB thumb drives. The wrist rest for the board is a joke because not only it's hard plastic but it's very flimsy and doesn't seem to stick well with the board. The wrist rest completely ruins the look and feel of the board and I seriously want them to either just remove the wrist rest entirely or make the wrist rest that is actually good. Then again the wrist rest from Logitech isn't great either. Back has this triangle pattern which looks really cool and the rubber pads sort of help the board stay planted however the flip up feet does not have rubber so the board will slide all over the place when flip up. The cable is thickly braided and easily bendable. This is nice for those that like to route the cable through a desk. The USB tip is silver which seems to matter less and less for people but it matters to me and I seriously think for the price point they should have made it gold. Easily the biggest drawback to this keyboard is the software because since this is from a smaller manufacturer they did not configure the software well enough. Due to the RGB nature of the board, this is a huge missed opportunity because the lighting modes in this board is very limited and it still costs as much as the competition. The user experience for the software is not the problem, but the lack of features considering the RGB nature of the board is because people buy RGB boards due to the fact that they want the high level of customization that can be found within those particular boards. Unfortunately, this board does not provide them with such features. On the bright side, if this is something that can be done down the line with over the air software updates then this board is something that's very much worth considering. But you have to be on the lookout because there are manufacturers <clears throat> that just release the board for a quick cash grab and ignore the consumer experience. I'm not going to give out any names but you probably know who they are. And I seriously hope that this board is not the case. Typing on this board is quite nice as the key travels fast and strokes are very precise. Which is why this switch is gaining popularity. It feels like a softer version of the Cherry MX Brown and it's also quieter which some may find very appealing. Due to the fact that a good number of us keyboard enthusiasts like to bring our keyboard to work and we want something that not only feels good to type, but we also want a keyboard that won't cause other people around us to be annoyed. 
I can definitely see why this keyboard is appealing for this particular demographic. However, in my humble opinion, I just love the way how clicky switches sound and they feel nicer because the sound they make when you press them is so satisfying. I still enjoy typing on this board as I am making this review and I just find the clicky switches to be more enjoyable. For me, a big factor for buying a keyboard is how it feels when typing because I do a lot of typing on a daily basis and having a keyboard that feels good to type is something that's on top of my shopping list and this particular board feels good to type. As for gaming, the Switch is great because it is similar to brown switches, therefore it is good for both gaming and typing. The bank of macro keys really helps this board wins the hearts of MMO gamers because they can have a dedicated bank of macro keys that they customize to meet their needs. FPS gamers should also enjoy this board as the keys are comfortable enough to hold for long durations and RTS gamers should also like this board too as the keys are fast enough to easily double tap. This is a nice keyboard to type and game, but at the price of $179.99 US retail, this is a tough bullet to bite. I sincerely want you to put this board on your list, but in no way you should go out and buy the board right away because of the lack of lighting customizability. I mean, this is the point of paying the extra premium for an RGB board in the first place. Anyways guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to comment down below and let me know how you feel about the board. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more content.